You know, the character of Satan has always been of great interest to me. You know why? Because he did some really strange things that made me crease my forehead. It's like the guy had never been in heaven. It's like he'd never seen the Holy Trinity. It's like he'd never been in the presence of absolute might. Then again, he did fall out of there thinking he could overtake it. So I get how Satan could go around try and tempt Christ in the wilderness, the son of man. I mean, he was the son of God. He knew him. He was able to identify him. Demons trembled in his presence when he showed up. They recognized him straight away and yet Satan tried to tempt God Jesus alrighty how much more then will he try to tempt those that can't lose their salvation questions that is my argument for once saved always saved just because the devil tries to take your salvation does not mean it is take her bone it just means the dude has always been naive so naive was he that he even tried to make Jesus fall away understand scripture you guys God is sovereign even over salvation Hello, in the name of Christ what's up so um I am belittled indeed belittle. I've been made to look like a little stick figure. Make that a little bit of a marionette that somebody can just dangle ropes on. And people imagine that these ropes that I'm dangled on uh, are money acquisitions, things, things, things. And insofar as they can just take them away from me, I'll do whatever they want. I'm sorry. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Indeed, because of the adoration of money, people imagine that they can use it to make people do the grandest abomination against their own consciences. I'm a Christian. I understand that there is a total hell to be avoided and a heaven to embrace. And that's where I'm going. Hallelujah. So therefore, to go and grab somebody with like even that religious conviction and then take all the money out of their lives hoping that they are going to do some of the most abominable things is to be as naive as your father. Back in the day when I was a fornicator. Yeah, I come from fornication. Praise the Lord for redemption. We've been celibate 11 years. Amen. Okay. It's totally feasible. Feasible. People don't die when they don't have sex. Maslow lied in his hierarchy of needs when he said that sex is the most bottom part of the rung. It's not true. You can live without sex. It's a whole thing. Back in the day when I was still celibate, I remember with my boyfriend freaking out that if I break up with this dude, if this bugger messes up, I'm just gonna have to go on right ahead and find another guy to sleep with. And what if he doesn't marry me? I was uncomfortable at the prospect of sleeping with a new guy. But I was in the world. I was lost. I was yet to be convicted by the Holy Spirit of sin. So if I could feel that uncomfortably about having brand spanking new body parts in my body belonging to a new human being, why are people acting like the sexual revolution is a thing? People are still uncomfortable about multiple sex partners, but you are searing your own consciences and pretending like it's not a thing that you're not happy that you've got a new guy ramming into. No, no, no. So okay. I have this thing about not throwing out the baby with the bathwater. So I watch Netflix. Some shows on Netflix are okay to consume, but unfortunately in these like terrible times that we're living in, the large majority of of shows on Netflix, if not all of them, however softly, mildly, they might make this recommendation, are trying to suggest that the whole planet, or at least a massive chunk of it, has always been in denial that quite a healthy percentage of the human race has always been gay. Guys, God made man for woman and woman for man, etc. I could go on, right? There are only two genders and there's only one kind of relationship that is acceptable before God. It is between man and woman in a marriage. So God would not then create an entire planet of human souls that are just confused with their sexual um, orientation. I understand that all of this perversion came in through our own sin, demonic possession, and a whole bunch of issues that we need to eradicate via like deliverance. So therefore, in the absence of actually acknowledging your issues, you will always think that the president of a country in 1922 was also gay. You know, people walk around me like... I don't know, my goodness, look at it. It's going through a lot, but girl, this is life works. You just so happen to be a little bit stuck up, otherwise you wouldn't be in this position. Whoa. In this day and age, godliness is called being stuck up. Being chased, yeah, that is being stuck up. If you don't want to just be rammed into laying on a bed like a chicken from Nando's, you're stuck up. If you've got any virtue, any values, if you are holding on to anything at all that is beautiful, beautiful and pious and worth the while to gaze your eyes upon, you're going to be called stuck up. Well, it's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Versus being just a beast, like I said, sprawling yourself all over the show, doing whatever has to be done, just so you can be embraced by people who can do nothing for your soul. Of the 
the character flaws in Second Timothy three of the human race in the last days is that they are despisers of those who do good. They can't stand people who do good. The reason why that is the case is because the world in the last days is going to become so prolific with wickedness, so infested with savagery all over the show that people are going to expect you to just plunge into the debauched lives that they're living in, or else, literally, they will have that level of arrogance. They will gaze upon your innocence and all of your Sandra Deek constitution walking around bursting with virginity, and they will be irritated with you precisely because of how evil they are. Now, when you live in a world like that and you can tell there's something very terribly wrong with it, why are you still going with the grain? What is with the group think? What is with the clout chasing when it's running up against your conscience? Who wants to be beastly? I'm sorry, it is unattractive. But in these days, that which is good is called evil, and that which is evil is called good. I would greatly implore you to repent and stop following after nonsense. You know, I long every single day of my life, my very sad and unfortunate life, to go home in the rapture or some eventuality that'll just make me breathe my last. Because I thoroughly comprehend where I'm going eternally. I'm going to heaven. I wouldn't be so desirous to speed up my entry into heaven if my life was not so hard. If everybody around me was not ignoring whatever is going on with my life. Sure, that's a sad old sappy, sorry, mopey、uh, sob story. However, those who have put me in a position to live like this, they're the ones that I'm here to like wreak havoc in the life off with scripture. Understand that my life sucks, and even though coming here might make you roll your eyes, but just by mere virtue of the fact that you're rolling your eyes, you're in trouble. For when he was hungry, you didn't give him food. When he was naked, you didn't clothe him, etc. I could go on. If you are doing nothing to eradicate the sorrow of people in your environment, especially when they're in Christ, you are not saved. But I'm encircled by professing Christians, and that's just the bane of my existence, the lukewarm conglomerate. How do you know that you are saved? Well, there's quite a lot. But one of the things is that from your belly flows rivers of living water. But there's a lot of people who have memorized the scriptures and sound real Christian, so that's not only it. Another thing that helps you along is just gauging fruit. Looking at yourself to gauge whether or not you're born again. Are you by just willpower doing what it is that you want to do, or are you actually genuinely walking in the Lord? You will know this within your own personal private space. The things that you allow yourself to ponder upon, things you allow your hands to touch, the things you allow your eyes to peruse.、Uh, that's what enables you to figure out if you're saved. So, to the lukewarm conglomerate, you know you're lying to yourselves. You know that you don't have a real relationship with God, and you know that you have got a low key. Hostility against people who are truly fervent in Christ. Allow me to snatch you from the flames of hell. It'll do nothing for you to continue flailing your body out here in these streets, acting like you're saved. Because hell is a real place, and it's hotter even for those who pretended to know Jesus. The Bible says that if it is possible, we need to try and snatch some even from flames of hell. That would be people. Um, yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to snatch, especially lukewarm Christians, out of the flames. Why? Because theirs is an eternal torment that is going to be far more exorbitant and compared. To everybody else, because they were close to the light. Lukewarm Christians, this is the danger that you are in. Precisely because it appears you have received everything that you asked for in prayer through the common grace of God. That's the only reason why that happened. You continue to persecute people that are obviously consecrated to Jesus, people that are obviously living a very above reproach life in Christ, that are bearing fruit, but are nonetheless going through a lot. And for those reasons, you imagine that their suffering must be the tantamount of them not being as close to God as you are. Yet, just based on your conscience alone, like common sense, it is clear that you are. Farther away from God than they are. Repent, as allow me to snatch you out of the flames and help you understand that the common grace of God is not the tenement of the grace of God for salvation. Celebrity in this country by the name of Caspanio Vest. He is a rapper, and recently I, w- I watched some video on YouTube where they were basically speaking about how he's not okay, depressed, or something sad, and it made me uncomfortable because we don't want another celebrity dropping dead that is very po- popular, you know, famous. Because we don't want to get hurt again, right?、Uh, but my thing is. Or was what Casper said. He said that he is always there. His presence is always there. And for me, it was like, yes, yes, indeed, his presence is always there. Prior to me getting born again, the Lord's presence was obviously in my life. I was a beneficiary of His common grace. I got so many things given me, albeit not really living in Christ. So now that He's in sorrow, my thing is, give your life truly to the Lord, that you might know what true joy is, because there is no joy in a lifestyle of sin. But that's just the thing. People equate、uh, get. 
getting everything that they've ever wanted with God obviously being okay with them. Guys, it's called common grace. Wake up and repent and don't be like us. You want to know why it is that fake Christians don't like real Christians? It's because they thoroughly believe that they're... Yes, indeed, there's a God. However, he does not really differentiate between a person that's super consecrated to him versus not. Another thing about fake Christians is that they are beneficiaries of the common grace of God on the earth and that, you know, rain falls on both the wicked and on the righteous. So when rain falls on them, in other words, when they gaze upon what they call answered prayer, they're like, see, this is the evidence of the fact that God has my back. And I'm like, okay, herein lies the deal. God has this thing that he does. When people continue to walk in their way and they don't repent, he hands them over to a reprobate mind. What a reprobate mind looks like is a person that just keeps on getting their day in court, albeit not being innocent. So if you keep on getting away with murder, you're probably reprobate and handed over. One needs to ask themselves this very basic question. Why would God choose me over that girl that's obviously closer to him? Just look at that alone. God is holy. Don't be deceived. This short that I was doing, I got interrupted by a phone call coming in and I don't even understand why anybody's calling me or how that's even a thing. It's probably a cold caller. I don't know because the number in question, nobody has it. And I only got this SIM card for the sake of starting yet another YouTube channel and getting it approved so I could upload more than 15 videos a day. But I might get this kind of work out. I have to keep starting channels because they keep on shadow banning me so i don't know who just called me there but it doesn't matter those life realities that i just explained to you now uh belong to a woman that is unroot heaven yes i'm going to heaven and in the previous part where the phone call came in i was speaking about how people be dissing me for sitting around waiting while my years just wither away for an obviously non-existent god <coughs> sorry that is not even coming through for me that's just the thing when you don't study the bible or you gaze upon it like a little pamphlet with two pages you are not going to understand Understand that long suffering is part of the Holy Spirit and that some of the biggest deliverances in the scriptures have often come to people who have waited the longest amount of time. So I live among a people that treat me like there is no future for me. Like you know when you hold on like Tarzan basically swinging on a rope to the earth. Yeah well just like Tarzan eventually you're gonna have to watch out for that but instead of treat God you're gonna crash into God. It's that basic. They look at me like I am an individual that is very sadly and unfortunately just too Christian and indoctrinated in that regard to do something about her life. They look at the time that is ticking. They look at my age, I'm 38, and they're like, girl, tomorrow you're going to be 40. And I'm like, well, okay, that's fine if I'm 40 tomorrow. I guess that happens. It's called chronological aging. Stop calling me, whoever you are. Oh, goodness. It's called chronological age. Am I really going to keep talking? Look, just repent. I live a very rough life, but I am patient waiting on the Lord to fix it. Some people consider me kind of foolish to sit around gathering dust, apparently, waiting on the said God. Except I'm not gathering dust. I'm doing these videos and I am also writing all the content I'm writing on my blog I'm doing whatever I can do to try and get myself out of this position And since I am not yet out of it I imagine that the Lord has got something in the cards for me though I would much rather have it come today my patience and long-suffering like I said gets me dissed It gets me looked at like girl You've got all the goods intact in you to get what you want through I don't know some random guy in these streets I don't e compromise yourself. That's just just thing that is just the thing who wants to live like a beast so they can eat like a king who wants to compromise every moral virtue they have ever had so they can get a small little ounce of this earth's goodness that's going to do away with their humanity altogether i am wise and that's it one thing i can never comprehend with enough mind power is how it is that people can embrace the prospect of heaven and yet reject that of hell if you embrace the one you must necessarily embrace the other and so embark on some kind of a research study to figure out how to get to of course the one that we all want to go to heaven we can't just continue to live like animals and anticipate that there will be no recourse for that because if at all you gaze upon a person living out their lives like a beast and you look upon them with disdain you must understand that that comes from somewhere and that somewhere is god he's given you a conscience to hate things which are obviously abominable in your face and yet people continue on in whatever it is that are their many atrocities hoping that nothing will ever be dealt with no one will ever bring them to book he's holy and he's going to do I'm so, it i'm so exhausted with all of the suffering that i'm enduring at the hands of social media you know i pro i totally 
totally totally was so like happy man like out of my mind jumping up and down so excited that finally i found a social media platform that was leaving me alone i was naive other christians on the internet kept on saying that hey facebook is the worst place it's the worst place uh for christians youtube is even better i was like what are you talking about youtube shadow ban me before i could even like make it i was at 600 subscribers more or less and they banned me from growing from there don't tell me about youtube youtube is rubbish facebook is a place to be and i kept on listening to them all be like girl you don't know you don't know you don't know like facebook is the worst one well i've just been shadow banned on facebook and i don't know what in the world is happening whether i'm being slapped left or right and it's the last place that i had it nearly made me leave but i've decided to fight come up against us and see how you prosper seeing as the only reason this world is still continuing to run and run is because god is gathering for himself a people so if you block that you are the ones that are going to get taken you know, the nice thing about social media is that people who log on to it watch it can watch whatever they want to watch without people really not having to know what they're watching if you are a member of a coven for instance like you're a witch and you're tired of sorcery sometimes it's very hard for you to go to an actual church you might even get busted by your coven and have them come at you with sorcery but social media enables you to watch a sermon or a deliverance minister talk about sorcery and getting out of it right from the comfort of your own home so there are people who are getting edified right in the comfort of their own home now imagine somebody that is a very prolific human being on the earth like i don't know a celebrity that's just sick and tired of belonging to the illuminati or whatever and they just continue you to consume the content of some small time youtuber because they're sick and tired of the darkness and then one day that person disappears you're gonna end up agitating big fat chunky people you don't know who god is working in and so when you de-platform garabo you might very well annoy some celebrity you are coming up against yourself by massive influences without even knowing who is sitting at the pews of these naivety of shadow banning or blocking or demonetizing or de-platforming or any kind of nefarious activity against christians that these social media platforms might be into herein lies the challenge behind that just like a church on sunday has got all different kinds of colorful folk in it sitting at the pews so too are the colorful folks sitting at the pews of christians on the internet you don't know which social media influencers that are yet to know jesus are watching garabo or whoever is on the periphery so when you shadow ban a christian what you do is cause other people that are not yet saved or that are saved however not actively involved in ministry to wonder what is it that is going on here and cause them to proliferate the agenda of this person that's being unfairly dealt with youtube you've got a massive followership so too does uh, facebook and what you don't know is that i'll be thinking that there's only a few of us that are busy doing the gospel but there are audiences that we are talking to that suddenly get shocked when our platforms are gone and they're gonna speak on their channels about us saying in christendom that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church what that basically means is that whenever you kill christians you don't silence the message of the gospel you only magnify it you add fuel it's the seed of the church well, indeed, just as it is true with that statement, so too is it true that the more you shadow ban Christians, the more that you deplatform them, that you demonetize them, the more that you afflict the church on your social media platforms, the more that you thrive it on social media. People often get curious whenever a person is just being pursued. Have you ever seen a car chase? Everybody stops in order to watch this thing. Other cars on the road literally make out of themselves spectators at a match just to watch a car chase to a point of causing traffic. So if you are going to keep pursuing truth channels christians blocking them shadow banning them causing them to start new channels blah 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 you're only going to magnify their ministries you're going to cause more people to charge to their ministries you're wasting time by shadow banning youtube facebook tiktok and twitter you're just making yourselves look like freaking villains That's well it. you know i almost left uh mainstream social media i almost abandoned my multiple subscribers and followers strewn across multiple channels since i had to start a whole bunch of them right uh, because i got sick and tired of getting somewhere with what i'm doing and then suddenly being stopped suddenly being stopped it's like getting to the office in the morning and they've packed your desk and you are awaited at the reception by a security guard who's telling you to basically hand in your access card you've been fired and without notice at all they do that to content creators. You rock up and there's a tumbleweed rolling in your um, account where nobody's even looking at you anymore. Where before there was bustling activity. Keep doing that Facebook. Keep doing that Instagram. Keep doing that TikTok and YouTube to all of your to many content creators and watch your organization start to crumble, crumble, crumble. You're naive. You know what, guys? Just to understand how bad 
the situation is on the ground with censorship. Yo, I have been shadow banned on Instagram. Not shadow banned, I mean, I wish I was shadow banned actually. What I wanted to say was I have been suspended on Instagram on a fitness channel. I was suspended on TikTok on a fitness account. Not truth. And the reason why this is the case is because both platforms are aware of me being a truth channeler. It's like they don't want me making money anywhere so I can thrive out there, push the gospel message that I will fund with money that I'm making on their platforms in a secular capacity out of e-fitness. That is the level of ominousness and eeriness and wickedness that dwells in this place. On Facebook, my fitness is frozen too. And I'm like, I'm sorry, if you're going to convert out of truth channels, Matt Damon and Born Ultimatum, as an organization in due season altogether, you're going to crash. YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, mainstream social media. Uh, there are other platforms that maybe you might want to add there, but those are the ones that I have experience with. And frankly, my experiences are not very kind. They are naive. They are naive. Thank you. That is the terminology of day. Naive. You know why they're naive? Because they think that they don't need us. They are a scaled. They are scaled organizations. In, the, in other words, they've got a lot of customers. Um, so therefore, they just imagine that they can slap silly one or two customers, um, and you know they'll keep the rest that you know tend to just kind of kiss their behind. But if they've never heard of the Pareto principle, then they are naive. Since they are an organization, they should have understanding of such business terms. The Pareto principle basically says that 80% of the destruction in any ecosystem tends to get caused by 20% of people. So if you annoy just enough people, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, etc., you are going to crash as an organization, period. Logical manipulation is a real and big, ugly, ominous deal being performed by some pretty powerful forces, not just the psychopathic serial killer guy that has got cadavers strewn all over his backyard for manure. It's entire CEOs, executives of organizations that have made a decision to just crush the souls of employees on the ground or even their clients. In the case of a social media, who it is that they are using as manure or fertilizer on their grass are their actual clients like as an organization when you go and you grab your client base and you just like psychologically manipulate the crap out of them make them feel like they ain't jack smother the living guts out of them if they say anything negative you stop letting them use your platform you are shooting yourself in the foot it's like selling video editing software and refusing your clients to use it they're not going to renew their subscription and they're also going to sue you for paying you money that you are not giving them the service that they signed up for. Social media, your days are nice. I've got a social media coping strategy given that social media is just shadow banning and blocking and preventing from growing every last Christian or alternative voice in this world. I have a strategy to so that I don't get a shock somewhere down the line in my journey as a creator with one day I got subscribers and followers and my life is peachy to oh my goodness there's a tumbleweed rolling around nobody's even looking at me. I'm so exhausted with experiencing that that I've made a decision that I'm not going to look at my comments, I'm not going to look at my likes, my dislikes, my whatnot, basically any notification at all coming through. I don't want to see it because when you get used to a flow of notifications telling you of activity in your account and then all of a sudden it's dry tumbleweed vibes, you think people have walked away from you and that's not even true. It's not people that have walked away, it's mainstream media that have shut you out so your people can't see you. It's called I really don't know what mainstream social media thinks it's doing. I don't know how far in this thing that it thinks it is doing. It's gonna get... I really don't know how far you think they're gonna get with this. You do not get to silence the planet from speaking anything alternative from what it is that you want them to speak and not face a little bit of a rough time as a company. As a company, I mean, if you stop catering to your client base and your client base continues to pay your bills every month one day they're just gonna wake up and realize wow i'm so dumb how about i move to another company mainstream social media you are not the only platforms where people can upload it's just that people have got like a strange addiction to you they can't leave because you've got big libraries and you've been around for a minute but understand there are companies who have crashed and burned in the past that were once so big that nobody ever imagined they could be brought low so youtube facebook instagram and places like twitter all these like random like weird odd joints you're your days are numbered. What's up? So I got shadow banned bully style by the one platform that I thought had my back. Really and truly. It's like dating. 
the guy in school that is a player known to just take the girl's virginities and disappear and then you rock up in his life and you imagine that you're going to be the one girl that he's going to rectify stay with do nothing bad to maybe even one day marry until he does exactly what it is that he did to all the other girls and moves on his merry way that makes out of you a fool doesn't it it was only a matter of time before youtube not youtube but facebook came after me in horagari washing and everything only a matter of time it made me give up i left it but i'm back with a vengeance because i got a thousand followers to cater to uh, you know bullying is a sport like hockey like netball like any other sport that you might play soccer and those who play it hope to do exactly what it is that people do in sports when but since it is a sport there must be a competitive side a competing side sorry what that then means for you is if you are bullied you got to fight so you can win a fight that you did not even plan on entering into facebook bullied me so too has youtube been bullying me i got bullied by instagram and tiktok all the four largest mainstream media platforms and i made a decision that okay so i didn't intend to get into this war since i wasn't playing a game but you're playing so it's on i'm fighting i'm back and i ain't going nowhere shadow ban me all you want in the name of jesus